Good morning. I trust that I find you well this morning. We celebrate, we thank God. We have entered into a new month, the month of March, which I pray and I believe that you march into your victory. You watch, you march into what God has for you. It's been difficult times we are living in, but it is always important for us to understand that God it is His grace, it is His power that will sustain us, that will strengthen us to do amazing, great things. What I want us to do this morning before we get into the Word of God, I would like just to start by getting a moment of prayer where we lift up our voices, we lift up our hearts before the Lord, we dedicate this month before the Lord, we commit our ways before the Lord for God to give us victory, for God to give us power, for God to sustain us, for God to strengthen us. I always say that your best days are not behind you, but your best days are ahead of you because what God is doing with you, whatever God starts, He makes sure He finishes. God has no business in starting something that He can cannot finish. The Bible is very clear that the word of God says God watches over his word to perform it. There are promises. There are things that God declared and decreed over your life that you will watch over until those things come to pass. Right now, I know you can look at what you're going through. You can look where you are, you are at and you feel like you know what seems like God is not with you. But I want you to understand God's presence is with you. So lift up your voice. Just begin to magnify God. Lift up your voice. Just begin to worship him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he is great. How much he is amazing. Commit and dedicate your life to him. For the Lord is good and he is marvelous. In all he's doing, he is an amazing God. So Father God, we thank you tonight, this morning, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you for people, everybody in their homes who are watching and who are listening to this sermon. We thank you because your word is power to change us. Your way, this power to transform us from the youngest to the oldest. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in your people's lives. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for the hand of God that is upon us, God. If it was not for your hand, we would have just been destroyed. Our enemies would have swallowed us alive. But because of your grace, because of your power, we are here today. So, Father, today as we commit the month of month in March into your hands, we are praying for victory. We are praying for progress. We are praying for success. May they be speed. May they be acceleration. We thank you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our time together as we get into the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We celebrate and we thank God. It's always a privilege and an honor whenever you're given an opportunity to minister the word of God, the incorruptible seed of God, which changes lives, which transforms lives. As we continue on this whole path about kingdom transformation, how God wants to transform or how God is pushing the agenda of the kingdom through the church. The church of God is the force at the church of God. God is the agent. And when we are talking about the church, we are not talking about a building. We are talking about you and me. We are the church of God. We are the light of God. We are the, the salt of this world. God wants to build and change lives through you and me. So it is important this morning and next week, I want to share something with us that has been on my heart. Uh, something that has been on, on my heart in terms of uh, 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 being born again or what we call salvation. You know, one of the things that we, when, when I grew up, I used to hear people, sometimes people were called or were nicknamed, oh, these born agains. It seems in my generation, I don't hear that more because when those days when people were saved, were saved. But I want to say this to us, beloved, there is no other way to enter into this kingdom, into this kingdom than being born again. Many of us, we are okay just belonging to a church. Many of us are okay just to belonging to a group, but it's not enough to belong to a church. It's not enough to belong to a group of people if you are not born again. So I'm going to share something today which I believe is going to help you, it's going to transform you, it's going to change you, and it's going to minister to you in a different way. When we, can, If we can go to our Bibles in the book of John chapter 3, 
John chapter 3 in the New Testament. I want us to, just to go through a parable, a story, uh, as not a parable, it is a story of what Jesus did when he encountered a man. One of the things that I want to lay as a foundation, I was thinking about this. Sometimes I like to watch these different movies where somebody has been captured, whether it be a, 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 a child has been captured or a son or a daughter has been captured, and now the person who has captured this individual is asking for a ransom. And I've watched parents who will be prepared to part away with millions for the sake of redeeming or for the sake of getting their child back. And you sit there and you're wondering, you know what, with such all sorts of amount of money somebody's prepared to say, I'm willing to let go of these millions as long as you can bring back my child ha not harmed. Even if you have harmed them, please bring them back. I'm still going to pay. So it is in that kind of a picture which is even lesser to what Jesus did for us when we talk about when we've been captured into sin when we've been captured into our struggles into our problems into our situations broken busted and destroyed but jesus comes on the scene says no, i am going to pay the ransom i am going to pay with my own life i'm not going to send an angel i'm not going to send anything but i'm going to lay down my life to buy you back beloved i want you to understand that there's no greater love than this where the Bible tells us that there is no greater love that God lays down his life for you and for me so when we are talking about our salvation we've been saved from sin we've been saved to, to from destruction we've been saved from things that would have totally destroyed our destinies but he redeemed us he bought us back because he loves us so one of the things that in times like this it's important sometimes just to reflect on the love of God, just to reflect on the grace of God, just to reflect on the mercies of God, but also to reflect on the favor of God. Why? Because you are not worthy to be bought. You are not worthy to be fought for. Some of us, we know it. Even our own family members, our friends, they will never have done that for us. But I want you to know Christ has done it for you. Even if you were the only sinner, Christ would have still come for you. So, beloved, I don't care where you are yet. I don't care what you're going through. What I know and what I care about is my God loves you. So there are things that I want us to look at even as we look at this scripture. The thing that excites me about John chapter 3 is, is talking about a prominent man. Even next week I'm going to talk again about another prominent man who then what the, who experienced the manifestation of what the first man was dealing with. So let's go into the word of God this morning. The Bible says now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher and you have come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God is not with him. It's very important, something that really caught my eyes there. The rabbi, the Pharisee, these were people who were always fighting with Jesus and everything. So the Bible says to us that he came by night. Maybe he came by night for different reasons. Maybe he didn't want the others to know his confessions, what he was going to do. or He was so curious about when he looked at Jesus' life, Jesus' ministry. That's why the Bible says he taught not as the Pharisees because he taught with authority. What was the authority? Whatever he said, whatever he decreed, it manifested. When he says you'll be healed, you'll be healed. When he said you'll be delivered, you'll be delivered. When he says you'll be prospered, you'll be prospered. He raised the dead. He did amazing miracles. So this man, the Bible says, by night... He came to see Jesus. Jesus would always have a packed day. But even in that way, he still had to accommodate this man who sneaked in through the night because of his own status. So the Bible says he came by night and he says, Rabbi, I know you're a good teacher. I've noticed that one of the things people can criticize you, but one thing that people cannot run away when God has given you something, they can hate you, they cannot like you, but one thing that they cannot deny is the hand of God upon you. So one thing he couldn't deny was this man was a good teacher. He says, Rabbi, I know you're a good teacher. Number two, I know you come from God. 
It's a very powerful confession where people know that I might not agree with you, I might not like you, but one thing that I cannot deny is you are coming from God. One thing that I can deny is I see the evidence of the power of Elohim. I see the evidence of the God who is alive and God who is living. Then he says, for no one could perform the signs and what you're doing if God is not with him. He knew that Jesus was performing genuine miracles. We're living in a time in a season where anything and everything is happening in our time and our season. But I'm praying that God would raise a generation that God would perform signs, wonders, and miracles in our individual lives, that people will stand and say, this is the finger of God. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. People cannot deny what is genuine. People cannot deny what is authentic. People cannot deny results. The Bible says that wisdom is justified by its children. The Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. So he says, I know, I can testify, I might not say it publicly, but one thing when I'm by myself, I know that your testimony, your miracles, your deliverance is genuine and is true. And that's what I'm praying for, that in our generation, God will raise men and women, God will raise fathers and mothers, boys and girls who are going to when we walk around. The world will look at us and say, you know what, I can testify, I can see that God is with you. I can see that the God and the signs and the wonders that you guys are performing are a sign that God is with you. May God make you a sign. May God make you a wonder. May God do things in your life that when everybody looks at you, they can only say, there is a living God. There is a true God. Jesus then replied to him, he said, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. There and there, Jesus then introduces something that was powerful and profound. He wasn't going to look for endorsement from this guy that, no, oh, he know that now I'm used of God. Now God is with me. No, no, no. He shifted the conversation. He says to him, very truly, he always spoke that truth, but he says, very truly, I tell you today, no one. No one, beloved, I want to say this today. Jesus said it and he said it clearly. Nobody, nobody, including those that lived, those that are living, those that shall live, no one can see the kingdom of God unless and until they are born again. We spoke about the kingdom of God being God's ways and God's method, God's ways of operation. You cannot see the move of God. You cannot see the power of God. You cannot see the establishment of the kingdom of God unless and until you are born again. You are born again, beloved. It might seem like the old type gospel, but it is still the truth today. You cannot see the kingdom of God until you are born again. You don't have to think that I have to give my money. I have to do this and do that and do this. It's as good and as great as all those things are. But truth be said is there is only one door to enter into this kingdom. You must be born again. It's time we go back to that place where we know anybody else who doesn't come through the door is a thief. You must be born again to see the dimensions and the experiences of God. The Bible says this man was a Pharisee. These were scholars. These were people who were learned. You would think it's obvious. Then Jesus says, you cannot enter until you are born again. Listen to what he then says. How can someone be born again when he is old? Nicodemus asked it, surely you cannot enter the second time in your mother's womb to be born. The things of the spirit, beloved, are spiritual and they are spiritually designed. They are statements, they are things sometimes we say in our preaching, we think people are understanding. But let me tell you, 
It is important for us to understand that the things of the Spirit are spiritually designed. Here is a law teacher. Here is a somebody who is a Pharisee whom Jesus explains, you must be born again. And for him, he is now beginning to think of it logically. He is now thinking, how can I be this old? Go into my mother's womb and be born again. How shall that be? He couldn't, fa he couldn't understand it. He couldn't, un he couldn't grasp it. what Jesus was trying to understand. He says, how can this be? He asked you the question. And sometimes we tell people, you must be born again. But we never take them through a process for them to understand what does that mean. Because they think that I'm already born. Or you hear people say, I've been born again. We tell people to be saved. They're asking you, saved from what? It is important, beloved, that unless and until people have a revelation of what God wants to do, they will not be able to understand what does that mean. Because then the man who could have been a Pharisee, could have been in church, but he wasn't born again. Because he wasn't born again, he could not see the kingdom of God. Jesus then started explaining to him. Jesus then answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and the Spirit. I want you to see the progression here. The first time Jesus says no one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Then he goes on to the next level when, when this man asks the questions, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and the spirit. So when we are talking about the kingdom of God, we are not just talking something that we shall see, but I'm talking about something that we shall enter. And I'm talking about something that we shall experience, something that we shall encounter. So he tells him, no one can just see it. But not only is God calling you to a dimension of seeing it, God is calling you to a dimension where you have to enter into the ways of God. You have to enter into the dimensions of God. You have to enter and experience this kingdom. So he says, no one can enter into the kingdom of God unless and until you are born of water. And you're born of the Spirit. I can imagine what's going on now in, but, in Nicodemus' mind. He's saying, no, 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 no. The first time he was talking about being born again, and I explained to him about my mother and my father, then he's now telling me, no, 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 no. You must be born of water. You must be born of the Spirit. Then he's asking himself a question. This is crazy. How can I be born of water? Does water give birth? How can I be born of the Spirit? Does the Spirit give birth? Beloved, I want you to understand there is something that God is taking us to. There is something that we got to understand the kingdom of God. So the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God. It's not just plain, but it's things that it needs to be understood and be grasped in, terms, in the dimension of the spirit. So the Bible says, flesh gives flesh to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. So when your mother gave you birth, he's explaining to him, she gave birth to the flesh. Flesh birth is flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. He switches it to him. He had to personalize with him. He tells the guy who was a Pharisee that you must be born again. He is really, he, here is the thing. The guy asks the question, how can one be born again? And he didn't say, I want to be born again. You could have said, no, no, I'm already a, a, a Pharisee. But Jesus knew, you were not born again. Because if you cannot understand the stuff that I'm saying, you are not born again. And he challenged them. He says, you must be born again. I don't know, beloved, when was the last time you challenged somebody to say, well, you must be born again. And I stand here today and I want to ask you a question today. Right there in your house, I know you've been in church for a long time. I know you say you, you give your offerings and everything. But I'm asking you a question. Are you born again? And I'm asking you a question today. Have you been born again? If you have not been born again, I want to say this to you. You who's listening to me, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again by the Spirit, by the water, so that you can enter into the kingdom of God. So he goes on to say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You can tell its sound. You can... But you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. So it is everybody who is born of the Spirit. When the wind is blowing, when the wind is blowing, you can tell the wind is blowing this way. 
You can tell the wind is blowing that way. But, and you can even see the sound of the wind. But the Bible says here, you can tell the wind is going this way, it's going that way, but you can tell, you can see the trees, you can see the effect. So Jesus is saying, so is everyone else that is born of the Spirit. Sometimes as born again, we are the ones going around telling people, I am saved, I'm born again and everything. But I pray that we be like the first church. The Bible says people, when they saw them, they saw their behavior, they saw their conduct, they gave them a nickname saying, Christians, these are like Christ. They behaved like Christ. They spoke like Christ. They lived their lives like Christ. Beloved, I'm here to speak to somebody. You must not become predictable. People can tell what God is doing in your life because of the impact because of the effect of the Holy Spirit because you're born of the Spirit you're born of the Spirit then Jesus goes on Jesus said how can this be Nicodemus asked it was very curious says you must you are Israel's teacher you are Israel's teacher you are a Pharisee you are teaching others how can you not understand this Jesus said you should not you should you should not understand these things very truly, I tell you, you speak of what we know. And we tell you that we speak what we know. And we tell you what we have seen. And we tell you what the people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you earthly things, and you do not believe how you will believe. If I tell you heavenly things, no one has ever gone into the heaven no one has ever gone to heaven the things. No one will ever gone into heaven and ex accept uh, the one who is from heaven. The Son of Man, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. And everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Beloved, here is the thing as I close this morning. I want us to understand. Pick it up this next way. Here is the thing that I want you to understand. He asks us, how shall this be? Jesus explains to him about earthly things and heavenly things. Then he brings up one thing that is very critical. He says, this is the only thing that is required of you. If you can believe, if you can believe, beloved, as we talk about being born again, it is about you accepting that outside him, outside Christ, no matter what title, no matter what background you have, you are nothing and you are useless. You admit that you are a sinner. Number two, you believe that you cannot save yourself and you believe that you need a savior. And then you accept that savior. You open up your heart to him. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So it is in you now understanding that I've got to believe him. I've got to accept him. And when you accept him as the Lord and the Savior of your life, then you are born again. You are born of the Spirit. You are born of water. You are born again. You are transformed. I ask you a question this morning. Have you believed? Do you want to believe that God died, Jesus died for you? He wants to save you. He wants to transform you. He wants to redeem you. I'm going to take us through next week a story of a man who went through this experience. And for you to experience, we understand what happens when a man has truly been born again. So right now, I want you to bow your head and I want you to pray with me. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to be born again. You want to be transformed. You want to be regenerated. You want God to come through for your life. You want to see the kingdom of God. But not only do you want to see the kingdom of God, you want to enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. And by you being born again, is you admitting that you're a sinner. It's by you accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior of your life. And a new journey, a new life begins from this very moment for you to see and experience the kingdom of God. So if you're there this morning, I would like you to pray this prayer with me meaning it from the bottom of your heart. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my life. I thank you for your word. I admit that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept you right now as the king, as the Lord of my life. Wash me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness that from this day 
I am born again. I thank you and I honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, if you pray this simple prayer, I believe that you have been born again because that's what the word of God says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and is faithful to redeem us from all our righteousness. May God bless you. May God continue to strengthen you as we meet again next week. God bless you. God loves you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.